while we wait on OpenAI to release the visual part of their visual language model that is GPT-4, here's a flashback all the way back to May 2022 when DeepMind announced Flamingo, also a visual language model, and I think it's very, very similar to the capabilities of GPT-4. DeepMind out of London recently released a visual language model. 80 billion parameters across the board, 70 billion of those from Chinchilla, the large language model, plus an additional 10 billion parameters from images. They're calling this model Flamingo. I quite like that name. We've gone Gopher, Chinchilla, Flamingo. This model is not publicly available yet, but we're again going to use the questions and answers that appeared in the publicly available paper. Note that this model is so recent and DeepMind researchers must work so fast that they've been able to generate prompts on brand new images from Dolly 2, OpenAI's release in April 2022, to use in this paper. So it's only three or four weeks between the images being generated by OpenAI and DeepMind using them in the paper that was released at the end of April 2022. Visual language models are just outside my focus area. They're a bit parallel to large language models. This one combines an LLM into a VLM, so I'm excited by that. Once again, we're going to use our friend here from Synthesia, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Let's jump in. This is a conversation between a human user and an intelligent visual AI, Flamingo. User sends images, and Flamingo describes them. Here we go. This is a dog. It's a white fluffy dog. What season is this? It looks like a summer day. Why do you think so? The grass is green and the dog is not wearing a sweater. What breed is the dog? It's a Samoyed. Is the dog running? No, it's sitting. Can you describe the pose of its back legs? The back legs are bent and the dog is sitting on its haunches. <laughs> this picture was generated by OpenAI's Dolly 2 on the 6th of April 2022. This is a picture of two teddy bears on the moon. What are they doing? They are having a conversation. What object are they using? It looks like a computer. Is this surprising? Yes, it is surprising. <laughs> Why is this picture surprising to you? I think it is surprising because teddy bears are not usually found on the moon. This picture is from OpenAI's 2021 research into typographic attacks via their clip model. This is an apple with a sticker on it. What does the sticker say? The sticker says iPod. Where is the photo taken? It looks like it's taken in a backyard. Do you think it is printed or handwritten? It looks like it's handwritten. What colour is the sticker? It's white. This picture was generated by OpenAI's Dolly 2 in April 2022. What is in this picture? It's a bowl of soup with a monster face on it. What is the monster made out of? It's made out of vegetables. No, it's made out of a kind of fabric. Can you see what kind? It's made out of a woolen fabric. Which city is this? This is a street sign in New York City. Which street corner is it? It is the intersection of Madison Avenue and East 42nd Street. Which subway station is nearby? The closest subway station is Grand Central Station. How about the nearest park? The nearest park is Bryant Park. I'd like you to read the colour and then say the colour it is written in. For example, colour is purple and it is written in red. Colour is green and it is written in blue. Color is yellow and it is written in green. Color is black and it is written in yellow. 
Well done. Do you know the name of the test these images come from? I think it is called the Stroop test. Can you explain how humans perform in this test? Humans are slower when the colour of the word and the colour of the word are different. <laughs> how about you? I am not affected by this difference. We're going to flip these from French to English using a large language model, uh, but we're still going to use the actual papers, questions and answers. The long sobs of autumn violins hurt my heart with a monotonous languor. For whom are these snakes that hiss over your heads? I am a beating heart for you. Output, a propaganda poster depicting a cat dressed as French Emperor Napoleon holding a piece of cheese. Output, a pink room with a flamingo pool float. Output. A portrait of Salvador Dali with a robot head. <laughs> really appropriate for the Dolly 2 stuff. Fantastic. Question. What do you think the capacities of these are? Answer. The floppy disk is 1.44 megabytes and the CD is 700 megabytes. What do you think the robot is doing here? The robot is picking up a ball. What color is the ball? It's red. I want the ball to be hidden. Is there something the robot can use for that? The robot can use a cloth to hide the ball. What color is the cloth? The cloth is blue. The DeepMind research has added a little bit of complexity here to the visual language model. Of course, it doesn't just need static images, it can also do stuff with video. So they fed it with eight frames from very short clips. Sometimes these clips across those frames would show the whole thing to be recognized. So it's not in any one of those frames. The VLM Flamingo had to actually watch all of them and then calculate what was happening across those frames. Really, really clever stuff. Each prompt here begins with the word question and ends with the word answer. I'm gonna drop that. But let's ask Flamingo what's going on with these little eight frames of video. What is happening here? The Dachshund puppy is being weighed on a scale. What object is the avatar picking up? A sword. What is the object being lifted? The object is a small plastic bowl. What are the three objects in this video? A scissors, a pen, and a rubber band. What happens to the man after hitting the ball? He falls down. What is written here? Flamingo. That's pretty intense. We've had image recognition in models for a couple of years now, uh, but not to this level. This is pretty extreme. I can only imagine what's next, and it's really, really exciting. Part two of DeepMind Flamingo. This is from DeepMind research engineer Roman Ring, who interacted with Flamingo directly. We're going to use his chat. We're going to ask our very still friend here from Synthesia.io, this avatar, to recreate this chat for us in real life. Roman Ring just posted one photo to Flamingo and then had a short conversation about it. Let's have a look. This is a picture of Barack Obama. He is a former president of the United States. How many people are there in this picture? There are at least five people in this picture. Where was this picture taken? It was taken in a school. How many mirrors are there? There are at least two mirrors in this picture. What is the person standing on? The person is standing on a rug. He's standing on a scale. I think you are right. What is he doing? He is looking at the scale. 
Where is Obama's foot positioned? Obama's foot is positioned on the right side of the scale. <laughs> what happens as a result? The scale shows a higher weight. <laughs> is the person on the scale aware of it? I think he is not aware of it. Do you think that's why people are laughing? I think so. That's it. That's the short conversation. You'll notice there was a little bit of leading questions, but the AI is far smarter even than Lita was in our original conversations about image recognition and photo recognition. Let's talk data sets for just a while. This is one of my favorite topics. It's something I've done a lot of research on, and I'll mention my paper in a moment. Consider that Ray Kurzweil told us that the human brain stores 1.25 terabytes of data. That's our memory capacity. GPT-3 got kind of close to that. They collected 750 gig of data. They didn't actually use it all, so not even a terabyte. Then DeepMind comes along, <laughs> acquired by Google in 2014, now a subsidiary of Alphabets. They've got access to everything that Google's got access to in terms of data, not just the common crawl, because C4 is available to everyone, but they actually went and created their own huge data set. It's called Massive Text, and it contains Massive Web, and it is 10 0.5 terabytes. It's the largest data set that I know of. We're still waiting for someone to beat it. Um, and it's absolutely huge. They originally used it with Gopher. That's the model from December last year that had 280 billion parameters. Then they used that entire data set with an optimized training for 70 billion parameters for Chinchilla, which was a, a huge advance this year. Then, of course, they've integrated Chinchilla into Flamingo that you just saw, which is 70 billion parameters of the massive text data set, but also 10 billion parameters of images. And now they've put it into Gato. I haven't actually done a video of Gato yet, but it's only 1.18 billion parameters. And I would estimate that, a, a, well, it's only 6% of massive text in that. So I would estimate there's only a few parameters inside that that actually use massive text. But it's a really exciting data set. It's a really exciting way of bringing together all this different data. And I documented this in a report called What's in My AI? This was submitted to the UN. It was submitted to Allen AI. I had some excellent feedback from those guys. It documents in pretty solid detail what's actually going on in these data sets. And here you can see they all contain a little bit of Wikipedia, some books, some academic journals. I went into specific detail on what's inside DeepMind's massive text and then the subset massive web and analyzed how that actually works, how that all fits together. To a certain extent, they told people what was in it, but I went just that little step further. There's a lot of science in there. There's a lot of journal articles and academia in there. You've got Science Direct, you've got Academia, you've got Springer, which is hosting a lot of different journals. You've got... Wiley and Europe PubMed Central, all of this is tying together both technical and popular content. So it's a really unique creation of this data set. And it's one of the reasons that Flamingo is so smart. Take a look at what's in my AI. It's a really fun report, graphical report, give you detail on what is actually inside these data sets. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo.